Twins, welcome back to my channel. So this week's vlog is less of a vlog and more of a how I set up my Dubia roaches. I had someone ask me about that and I thought it was a really good video idea and I thought that this would be the perfect time to do it because I am about to upgrade my Dubia roaches enclosure into a bigger bin because right now they're in a very small bin and I mean it works but they're kind of always stomping on each other so I just wanted to upgrade that and give them more room. And the way that we're going to do this is actually going to work for Dubia Roaches or Cricket. So you could use this for either one. But in my case, I don't use Crickets because I don't like them. <laughs> but we're going to do that for my Roaches. So first of all, you are going to want to start with a large Sterilite bin. This is a 58 quart or 14 and a half gallon Sterilite bin. You want to have plenty of room, especially if you are housing crickets. Crickets need a lot of room. If they start to overcrowd and stomp on each other, that is how they die quickly. You will also, of course, need a lid to prevent escapees in your house. And we want to also give them good ventilation. Crickets especially need a very well ventilated top. If you are not planning on breeding your crickets, high humidity in this enclosure is going to cause it to smell so much worse than they already do. But carrying on, these holes were cut with a hole saw. You could also just drill a lot of little holes at the top. You could take a box cutter and cut one giant hole at the top. You can do this really however you like, but I just like the look of the two circles. <laughs> and those holes are not going to stay open. Open. We're going to add screen to it in a little bit. Then we are going to start filling this bin. For this one, I'm using egg crate, but you could literally use whatever. In my smaller containers, I usually do toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, but I actually found a bunch of these like normal egg cartons at my local farmer's co-op and they were selling them for like 48 cents each. And so I grabbed a bunch of those. They definitely don't work as well as egg flats. Egg flats I usually get from joshesfrogs.com but they will do the job and that job is actually a few different things they number one are going to provide more floor space for whatever feeder you have crickets like I said they will stomp on each other and walk all over each other and kill each other if they don't have enough room and this is providing them so much more floor space because they're going to use every inch and every crevice of these egg crates they also provide a place for them to hide dubia roaches will scatter and hide when light comes in contact with them so they need places to hide to feel safe and especially if you are trying to breed either of these then you definitely want to make sure that you are meeting all of their needs. A bunch of stressed out dubia roaches aren't going to breed anywhere near as easily as if they were happy and healthy. Next up we have to feed and water our feeders. It is super important to gut load any insects that you are feeding your animals to make sure that they are filled with with the proper nutrients. To do this, you can do things like milk caps and soda lids or things like that. But since this is such a large enclosure, I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of room to put food in here. So I'm just using old mealworm containers that I have laying around. And this one I'm filling with cricket calcium. Flukers make some. This is just some that I got from a Walmart one time for like 10 or 25 cents. I don't know, super cheap. And I bought like all the ones that they had but this is something that's going to bump up the amount of calcium that your cricket has to offer. I like to offer a variety of different foods for them so I am going to use this old waxworm container and cut another dip out in the front like I did the other one and I just do that because dubia roaches have a hard time climbing smooth surfaces and this just gives them something to grip as they're climbing up the food container. And I like to feed feeders these bearded dragon pellets because most of my feeders go to Zaz and she doesn't like these pellets. She never has. And I bought them before I knew that they weren't really the best for your animal. So ever since then, I have bought them to feed to the feeders and they absolutely love it. That's always the first thing they eat. And you can find them on sale all the time. For the water, I don't like to buy the Cricut water gel 
of things because I feel like it's a waste when you can just get a big container and stick a wet napkin in there and it does the same thing. You can't really just put a bowl of water in these enclosures because the bugs can get in there and get trapped and drown. So it's best if you have like a sponge or a napkin or rocks or something in there so that they can get out if they get in there. And now it's just time to move my roaches in. We still have to do the lid that's coming up. You can see how small my old bin for them was compared to this one so it is going to be a nice upgrade for them. I also got a shipment from the doobiedoo.com so that is going in here as well. And now for the lid so you have your holes drilled or cut or however you want to do it. We are going to take a hot glue gun and go ahead and get that warming up and then we're going to cut out some mesh screen to fit over that hole. You could cut it out as two separate holes but I just kept it as one big square. So you're just going to make sure to cut enough that is bigger than the hole that you have and then we just hot glue over that. I just put the hot glue on top and then I use scissors to kind of push it down in there and it does a really good job at pinning the screen to the plastic and it keeps it in place. I also went around the edges so that way no little roaches would get up in between the screen and the plastic and be trapped there. And from an aesthetic standpoint, I just prefer to do it this way over cutting out circles. And at this point, if you are just setting this up for a gut loading bin just to feed these off, you are done. If you want to breed roaches or crickets, it does require a couple more steps. In either case, you will have to have a heat pad attached to this as well. And you need to heat this container to about 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you are breeding crickets, then you also need some kind of substrate in this bin as well. And this can be achieved by taking a small container and putting topsoil or vermiculite or anything like that. Or you could set up a whole thing with all of it being topsoil or vermiculite at the bottom. But that does require a couple more steps. And other options for feeding these guys, if you don't want to do commercial things, you can do dry dog food, you can do fresh vegetables, collard greens, mustard greens, carrots, potatoes, anything like that. You can do fish food. Basically, these guys will eat anything. Otherwise, you are done at this point. And that's it for this week guys hopefully that was helpful in setting up your divya roach colony or crickets or whatever feeders you are setting up hopefully that helped out a little bit and as always guys if you are not already please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time i put out a new video which is every sunday and wednesday thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day bye